Hey guys, it's me, Derek. Stephanie. And Cindy. And today, I've got a great topic for all of you. I know you're all going to be really interested. You know it. You love it. You guess right. It's suspension bridges. I love suspension bridges. And today, we're going to show, be showing you why the greatest invention of all time, suspension bridges, are better than all of those lesser bridges. Bridges have been an important part of society for a long time. They first originated when humans attempted to copy nature, after witnessing trees falling across rivers. The Chavan civilization and the Andes Mountains first used bridges in around 900 BC to connect to their mountainous regions. Bridges were used, and they're still used today, to facilitate trade and communication. These structures foster unity, both between land and cultures. Throughout history, there have been different variations of all sorts of bridge designs. They each have their different strengths and weaknesses. These are the four most common types of bridges. First is the beam bridge, a simple platform. Next is the arc bridge, which consists of a platform situated on a curve. Third, we have the truss bridge. The truss bridge is basically created by a supporting lattice network. And lastly, the bridge that we will focus on most in this video is the suspension bridge. Today we will be going over suspension and beam bridges. A suspension bridge has cables between towers mounted on piers along with vertical suspension cables. These suspension cables are anchored at each end of the bridge and carry the majority of the bridge's load. The first suspension bridges were built by a Tibetan saint in the 15th century, and the modern suspension bridge appeared in 1959 in Venice. Today, famous suspension bridges include the Golden Gate Bridge, the Brooklyn Bridge, and the Longest Suspension Bridge, the Akashi Kaikyo Bridge in Japan at 1,991 meters. On the other hand, the simplest, oldest bridge type is the Beam Bridge. The Beam Bridge generally consists of a platform supported by two piers on the end. Beam bridges today include the Windsor Bridge and the Albert Bridge in London. There are many different types of forces that affect the actual stability of bridges. Today, however, I'll be talking about two of the most important ones, compression force and tension force. Compression force is any sort of force that tries to compress or make the material smaller. For example, if you press your two hands together, that's a compression force. So how does some compression force actually affect bridges? Well, for example, Compression is most often times found in the pillars of supports such as beam and beam bridges or the towers in a suspension bridge. So what happens if the compression force is too great? Well, if a, the compression force is too great and the material is weak enough, then the actual support will break in two pieces such as this. Now, what happens if the material is too strong to break in half? Well, compression force can do other things to bridges. For example, if it's too great and the material is too strong, then, it can then the pillars can buckle such as this. Now, in both scenarios, the bridges will fail. So in order to reduce the chance of this happening, engineers oftentimes find, put a weight limit on bridges to make sure there's not too much compression force. Now let's talk about the next force, tension force. Although many of you associate tension force with cables, wires, and string, it's not only limited to that. For example, in suspension bridges, the only ten the tension force is not only found in the cables. Tension force is any sort of force that tries to expand or make a material longer. For example, in bridges, <coughs> the bending of the actual bridge would be a tension force. So what happens if the tension force is too great? Well, <coughs> if the tension force is too great, then the bridge will bend too much and the bridge will snap. Obviously, in this scenario, the bridge will fail. Now let's look at how tension and compression forces affect the beam bridge and the suspension bridge. We'll start with beam bridges. In beam bridges, the compression force is caused by the weight of the bridge itself and anything on the bridge, such as cars and people. This force is then transferred to the beams which are compressed, and finally the beams transfer the force into the ground. The tension force in beam bridges comes from weight on the bridge at points far away from the beams. At these points, the bridge starts to bend. This is the weakness of beam bridges, as if the distance between beams is too great and the weight is too high, the tension force will be too high and the bridge will snap. Now let's talk about the actual good bridge, the suspension bridge. 
The suspension bridge is composed of a few simple components. The anchors which hold the main cables, the two towers, the main cables which are strung across the towers, and finally the smaller cables which hold up the platform. How a suspension bridge works is that any weight on the bridge is supported by the tension force of the smaller cables. These smaller cables send pull on the main cables causing a tension force. The tension force of the main cables push down the two towers which cause a compression force. This compression force on the towers is finally transferred into the ground. Because the force of the main cables on the towers is directed downward, the towers don't have to worry about bending, and as a result, oftentimes these towers are quite thin. Any weight at any point in the bridge is transferred from the platform to the towers and finally into the ground. This consistent distribution of bridges causes a stronger, far more superior bridge. Suspension bridges have many practical advantages over beam bridges. Span range is longer in a suspension bridge, since the towers and the supporting cables can disperse the tension and compression forces, but beam bridges get weaker the farther the distance between the supports. For this same reason, suspension bridges can withstand earthquakes far better than beam bridges can. Wider traffic lanes, or pedestrian paths, can be implemented with suspension bridges due to their wider bridge decks as compared to a beam bridge. Beyond the advantages explained by physics, suspension bridges also have reduced construction costs as they can be built with cheaper materials, such as wood and common wire. Furthermore, suspension bridges add to the beauty of cities. They are known as the most aesthetically appealing bridge and are far more pleasing to the eye than the simple design of beam bridges. The concepts and physics used in building bridges are applicable to building many other structures. In bridges, engineers are always worried about stress and strain. Stress is the force that surrounding materials exert on the particles of the object, and strain is the deformation of the object itself. Too much stress or strain and bridges will fail. Stress and strain further applies to structures like skyscrapers and tunnels. For skyscrapers, they will also collapse if the force of the building materials and the people and items inside are not supported well. Tunnels similarly face the issue of being able to expand across distances without support under the entire structure, just as bridges do. Today, we describe the importance of bridges along with a brief history of them. Out of the many types of bridges, we focused on two of the most common ones, the beam bridge and the suspension bridge. Through the analysis of how both types of bridges deal with external forces, we argue that the suspension bridge is more effective than the common beam bridge. A suspension bridge uses cables in order to evenly distribute the weight of both the bridge and any objects on it, making it stronger than the beam bridge and allowing it to span longer distances. We then argued the many advantages of suspension bridges. Finally, we connected the concept using analyzing bridges to different types of structures. And remember, there are two types of bridges, suspension bridges and all the other types of bridges. The technical term for these bridges is trash.